right, that is a willow leaf. I'm right behind you. And worm. It's kind of old reliable for us. There we go. Nice. Good job. Ring the dinner bell for trout, kokanee, and landlocked kings with Kel Kellogg's Willow Leaf Dodgers. Available in mini and magnum sizes at fishhuntshoot.com. Get yours today. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. It's time to talk trout trolling tactics and my hands are full of lures. When it comes to dialing in a trout bite, very often what we're playing with, the variables we're playing with, our flash and vibration. And man, I've been guiding every day this spring for the past two months pretty much. And uh, those are two factors that I've played with a whole lot. And there's a third factor that I don't think we play with enough. Now, some days your spoon or you know your fly or whatever, in this case, here's a broken back trigger spoon. Um, your lure by itself trolled naked will produce enough flash and vibration to draw the fish in, get them to strike, and close the deal, okay? Other days, it seems like we'll do better if we add flash and vibration. If we're at a big open water impoundment like Shasta or you know Folsom, Don Pedro, um, we'll often run something like this six inch Fisheye Pro, puts out a ton of vibration, it's a big, you know, hard thumping blade. It puts out a lot of flash. You can see that probably flashing at the camera right there. It pulls fish in from a long distance. If we're running a lure that has action, we'll run that lure anywhere from two feet to about 40 inches behind a blade like this. If we're pulling something that doesn't have action like a, a tube or something like that, the rule of thumb is we'll put it two to three blade links behind the blade. This is a six inch blade, so we'll run it anywhere from 12 to uh, 18 inches back. It's gonna impart action to that lure or that offering that has no action, and uh, very often we'll catch fish on that. Now, if that's too much flash, maybe we're fishing a small lake or maybe we're, you know, we're just fishing at a time when the fish aren't super aggressive and that, that amount of flash and vibration proves to be too much. And you know when it's too much, you're, you're not catching fish, okay? So, so then you want to kind of, kind of, you know, back off on the amount of flash and vibration that you're imparting, and maybe you'll break out something like, like my mini willow leaf dodger, something like that there, or for a, a different type of vibration and, and more limited flash, maybe you'll bust out something like that right there, a turbo flasher, and you'll run this again. If you're running a lure that has action, you'll put that lure, you know, 24 to 40 inches behind the attractor. Um, if it doesn't have action, you're gonna you're gonna shorten it up. You're gonna run it, you know, two to three dodger links behind the willow leaf. It's got to be something pretty pretty subtle to have the willow leaf impart action to it. And of course, the turbo flasher isn't gonna impart any action, but it has a, a very different type of flash and vibration than the six inch dodger or, or one of my, my willow leaves, mini willow leaves, whatever. It's just a different sound and a different type of flash. Now, these variables, playing with these variables can be very important day to day and fishing every day, I've been able to see everything and I've been trolling a lot of worms. Some days, the fish that I'm fishing, they just want a rotating worm with no flasher, no dodger, no nothing, they're, they're kind of off the bite, but that rotating worm pr produces enough, you know, vibration for them to come in, check it out, grab it, eat it, fish on, everybody's happy. Other days, my scores go up substantially if I run the worm, you know, say 40 inches behind a turbo flasher. There are other days, and this changes from day to day, hour to hour a lot of times, there are days when I can't get them to go on the turbo, but they will jump all over a worm, you know, trolled behind a mini willow leaf like that. It's all about showing them different, you know, different recipes, different levels of flash and vibration and determining what they want on any given day. Once you've located some fish, then you can experiment with them, you can play with them, and you can figure out what works fairly quickly, okay? 
Here's a variable that I hadn't played with a lot, but I started playing with it last week and it was working for me. I was having limited success on a naked worm, but I was also having limited success with the turbo and the willow leaf. Well, I started playing with leader length. And there was one day in particular when I only had two fish at like 10 o'clock. Um, and I ended up with uh, just short of limits that day. I think I ended up with 11 or 12 fish for three guys. And the thing that put the fish in the boat was running a turbo flasher with a full six feet of leader behind it. They wouldn't hit the naked worm very well. They wouldn't look at a worm behind the willow leaf, but if I scope that leader out behind a turbo to about six feet, we started hooking fish and it was a very subtle bite. We were on the downrigger. I'd see them playing with it on a downrigger and what I'd do, I'd just pop it out of the clip and just hold the rod. And as that rig, you know, rose through the water column, the trout would follow it and they would keep hitting it. And uh, went, once the once the turbo leveled out behind the boat and the fish found themselves in warmer water up near the surface, they would often commit and you would see them take the worm fish on. So the leader length is really the third variable you want to play with. Flash, vibration, and leader length. I usually start out trolling naked in the morning. I'll start out with a naked spoon, something like that. I'll add blades and, and flashers as I need to, but remember, you're playing with different levels of flash, different levels of vibration, kind of taking the trout's temperature on any given day, but the third factor you can play with is leader length. A lot of times it doesn't matter, but sometimes it matters a lot. So just trying to give you, you know, guys some ideas of what to do out on the water when you're scratching your head. Typically, you don't want to make radical changes to your gear. You don't want to go from a threaded worm to, to a seven inch Rapala, okay? You're, you're trying to do subtle changes. And we found, because we're out on the water every day, I've learned a ton about trout fishing, and we found that very subtle changes can, can make a big difference in the amount of bites you're getting and the amount of fish you're hooking. One of those is leader length behind an attractor. Another one is the depth you're trolling at. Sometimes we'll adjust our depth by no more than three feet and it's like you turn on a light switch. You'll drop your offering down three feet or raise it up three feet. You'll instantly be into the fish and you might have been trolling for 35 minutes before without a bite. Now the question is, did they just start biting or was it that change that made them bite? And we've been out there enough this spring that uh, Wes and I, we've kind of determined that very often those small changes, those small variations will trigger a bite. They'll trigger good fishing. So remember, when you're out on the water, okay, make very incremental changes to your gear. Get out there in the morning, start fast and aggressive, take their temperature, locate some fish, then start playing with the amount of flash, vibration, and leader length along with small, you know, changes in the depth of your offerings. Be methodical, um, stay in the game, work those little, little differences, and very often you're gonna find a recipe for success. And you know, when you're seeing guys around you that are catching fish, but they're having mediocre results, those little tweaks will often take you from having a fair day to a very good day. Anyway, there's a lot for you guys to think about there. Wes and I think about it all the time when we're back in camp at night, when we've been guiding all day, we discuss all this stuff. We bounce ideas off of each other. We talk about what we saw. We write it down in our fishing logs. And uh, I gotta tell you, there is no better classroom than the trout lake itself because when you're out there, the more you fish, the more you learn. Obviously, I've been trout fishing my whole life, but you know, fishing this spring, fishing every day, week in, week out, I have learned a ton of things that uh, I might have suspected before, but now I know they're true. And there's some other things that I have eliminated that, that just were wives' tales that just simply were not true, or at least not true for me out on the water. The water, the trout, that's the ultimate classroom, and the fish, they're the ultimate teachers. I'm signing off for now. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for gear, you know where to go. Go over and check out my store at fishhuntshoot.com and please hit that subscribe button. You know, we're gonna talk the basics here. We're gonna talk the upper level stuff here. 
we talk trout, other species, sometimes we talk UFOs and whatnot. Whatever's on my mind, you hit that subscribe button and you're going to know when I'm on here blabbering on YouTube. Thanks for all the support and I will catch you next time. I'm Cal Kellogg.